John, nice to see you again. It's been a year. Seems like a great time to catch up on 5G. There has been an extraordinary amount of progress. Bring us up to speed. Sure, yeah, it's been a very exciting year and it's great to see you again. And it's funny to think where we were basically 365 days ago versus all that's happened in terms of the industry momentum now. So we talked to you last year about 5G and things just getting going in 3GBP. Now yeah. it's been a full year of progress working through the release 14 study item. So a very exciting time of technology decisions being made, yeah. but more importantly now also operators coming out and saying, hey, we want to deploy we want this. To do this and 2019, not 2020. So we're seeing the timeline respond to yeah. the kind of global momentum but it's for 5G. But it's almost we're breaking the laws of physics because you know the, the, the G standards usually get developed in a very striated and, uh, and calendared way. So this time last year, it really was impossible to imagine that we could you know, get in a time machine and just lop another year off uh, the deployment of this. How's the industry going to do that? I mean, I'm hearing words like uh, 5GNR and, and 3GPP acceleration, and what's going on? Sure, yeah, so the uh, 5GNR indeed is the new acronym for new radio, and uh, goes kind of pairs with the next gen core. NGC right. is another acronym you'll see a few years from now as well. And so the industry momentum has been about, hey, there is this pull, yeah. how can we as a vendor community and as an operator community regions that kind of worldwide uh, allocating spectrum right. meet the demand that we're seeing. And so the excitement has been that momentum and the kind of technical decisions being made at a faster pace. Right. This is not our first time we're designing an air interface. And right. so there is a lot of technology, a lot of teams coming together globally to say, let's do this. So let's talk more action. Exactly. But we're not having to uh, accelerate the lab work as well, are we? Or are we? Is that is that happening as well? Or is it that the, you know, the physics are available out there, and we're just going to put them together more quickly? Sure. There's still the the fundamental research is being translated into these right. implementations. Even today, we're demonstrating 5G and R decisions in action in our, for example, prototype implementation. Yeah. That's going to feed into silicon implementations. Yeah. So what you're seeing is kind of globally, teams are being allocated to say, let's address this demand on the chipset side, on the standardization side, and the design side. Yeah. And uh, you're, you're, so you're seeing that kind of movement in the last year yeah. from talking about, hey, 5G, 2020, uh, a lot of different use cases to saying, let's have a prioritized development within 3GP, delivering the high millimeter wave bands, delivering the sub six gigahertz bands, yeah. delivering you know, differences as well as standalone and non-standalone being part of release 15. Yeah. So a lot of work, uh, has been gone into the planning and the execution now uh, on 5G. I mean, I have to say, uh, you know, for me, looking at the industry, Qualcomm uh, is really leading this uh, 5G revolution. So, you know, thank you for doing that. I mean, how have you managed to, to get ahead in this? Because, I mean, you are, uh, for me, I think the acknowledged leader in 5G development. Did you just see it early? Did you just put more resources into it? Are you just more passionate about it? Well, it's what? definitely a, a, a combination of all those three things where yeah. we have the committed resources, we do have the passion for, we're in the G business, as we like to say. Yeah. So a huge kind of research team backed up by development and standardization efforts. Yeah. Yeah. So for us, it's kind of an exciting time to translate you know, what started early on in initial cell phone connectivity through the smartphone revolution of 4G, and yeah. now into even more use cases as part of 5G. Yeah. So for us, it's an exciting time to see that kind of vision be translated into reality. Yeah, yeah. but 4G was great. 5G is going to be mind blowing, right? I mean, we're talking about really, truly revolutionary stuff. I, I think the thing which we're probably going to see, I don't know if you agree, is over the next few years, uh, you know, the, the, the application of the technology is going to go to places that we haven't even thought of yet. Exactly. And that's what happens with these really revolutionary technologies. And that's going to be exciting, isn't it? It really is. It, it is, and, and that's always the exciting thing with these transformer changes, is that you're building this new platform, yeah. so you don't really know all of the use cases that are coming next. Yeah. So the real goal right now is to create this basically compelling and flexible platform that Operators, sure, they can do mobile broadband initially. Yeah. At the same time, it's being designed for these higher reliability, low latency use cases. Yeah. So it's kind of exciting. You'll see a lot of demonstrations on you know, augmented reality, virtual reality, driverless exactly. cars. Yeah. It's important to remember, we're in the very early stages. Yeah. A lot of those technologies are also being proven out on LTE as we speak today. Yeah. You know, gigabit LTE is here today. You know, and, and aspects of applying that to automotive. Well, automotive, uh, you know, uh, sort of the, the level five autonomous car 
revolution can't happen without 5G, right? I mean, it's uh, that that is actually the two things are going to intersect. So, in fact, the fact that we may have 5G a year earlier means we're probably going to have autonomous cars uh, possibly a year earlier as well. So, so look well, we out. Certainly exactly, we yeah. certainly hope so. And yeah. that's the part of, as you're driving to those new low latency aspects, things are happening faster, higher rates are coming, more spectrum is being brought to bear. Yeah, which is great. Yeah. So, yeah, it's great to see you. Yeah. Let's try to catch up more than once a year. I, I have a feeling we're going to need to, because it feels like there's going to be just so much to talk about. Exactly, we're maybe undersampling if we're doing it once a year. Exactly, so. it's always a pleasure. Yeah, Thanks very so. nice seeing you again. Nice to see you. Bye bye.